Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Welcome to another episode of Shop Talk. Uh, this is something that's been laying on my heart for quite some time now and I feel like this just really needs to be addressed. Um, and yes, it does have to do with scripture and God's word. Have you ever wondered like why we do what we do in the church? Like why we believe what we believe? I would say that being a Christian, everything should line up with Scripture, with what this says. Most assume, including myself at one point, most assume that, that what the pastor or preachers are teaching and what the church is doing is truth. But in reality, we need to check it. We need to be like the Bereans and examine the scriptures and what we are being taught because that's what they did because Paul and Silas went to a Jewish synagogue in Berea and in Acts 17 11 this is what it says now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica we receive the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. So you could see that Paul and Silas went to the synagogue and were preaching and teaching, and these Bereans were going back daily and checking because they were eager to hear the word, but they wanted to make sure that what Paul and Silas were teaching was actually scripturally based. And if you're not looking at this, at what's being taught or what's going on, you'll just take it as blindly and just take it and just go along with it. When that's not what the Word of God says that we need to do. We need to dissect and make sure that what's, that what's being taught to us and what's going on in the church and what's been passed down is actually coming from the Word of God. I'm not saying that like all pastors and teachers are purposely teaching false doctrine. That's, that's not what I'm saying because I feel like uh, for most, it's just what's been taught to them or something that's been passed down that they just assume. This way of thinking is a deception because we are not that, not that we're being deceived because of what they're doing, we're being deceived by our own selves because we're not going in and reading it for ourselves and realizing that a lot of the stuff that is going on and being taught does not actually line up with what the Word of God says. I was sharing with a fellow Christian brother of mine one day, I was sharing all the things that I learned by just reading Scripture alone. And because he could not refute what I was saying to him he went to the default and what I mean by the default is he told me he said well we need someone who's more educated or who's been to seminary school or has a college degree in order to understand these passages again that is that way of thinking is a deception um, because the Word of God that is not what it says because it, it because you do not need man to teach you. But that's what we're taught, right? Or that's what we just assume, like we can't understand everything because we haven't gone to a college. That's not how it was back in the early church. All we need is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. 1 John 2, 2, 7. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you, about everything and is true and is no lie just as it has taught you abide in him again we can see in scripture right there we don't need man to teach us man is fallible but the word of god and the holy spirit are infallible and so if we go along with what man says and what's been passed down through false teaching and false doctrine and false stuff that's going on in the church then we are being led astray. Here's my challenge to you. Put aside everything that you've been taught by man and other books. 
I mean everything. Including church traditions. Satan is called the father of lies and, and the great deceiver. He will put truth with a lie so that we assume that what is being taught is the whole truth because, well, it sounds right and it seems to fit it somewhat. But again, that's what he does. It's he'll take the truth, which is what he did when he told Adam and Eve, you will be like God. You will know, you know, which there was a partial truth in there because they would know what good and evil was. But what he didn't tell them is that they sh surely would die. And so again, this is my challenge to you. I would say, pretend like it's your first time reading the Bible. And when you read it, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you and guide you in truth. Try to put everything that you've been taught, everything that you've heard, everything that goes on in church and just put it aside. Just pretend like you live in some foreign land and you've been given this book and you just read it. You might be very surprised to learn things that, that don't line up with scripture or things that might just be doctrines or teachings of men. We want to follow Christ wholeheartedly. Don't be deceived and don't put your trust in men. I think that sometimes we feel like, you know, a pastor or a preacher, that's their job. That's what they get paid to do. You know, so that's their job. I'll go on Sundays and I'll learn from him and whatever he teaches me has got to be true because that's his job. And if something happens to me and I and I stand in front of the Lord, you know, I can say, hey, you know, you put him in charge. We can't blame others. Paul says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Jesus says, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, these were obviously people who were part of the church or thought that they were following Christ. These weren't like just, you know, people who were like atheists or, or people who didn't follow God. They were actually going and being part of it. And they thought what they were doing was God honoring. But in reality, he's going to tell them, I never knew you. And that, those words are words you never want to hear. Because we don't get a do-over. We don't get a second chance. Like once we take our last breath, that's it. And we have no excuses. We can't blame other people. So again, my challenge to you is to pick up the Word of God and read it without any influence. I did this about a year ago. Actually, it's been over like a year ago. My wife has too. And then you start wondering like, well, that doesn't make sense because it's, this is what the church is doing. Or this is what I've heard. But that's not what this says. Pray to the Holy Spirit and just read the Word of God. In reality, that's why there's so many divisions in the church. So many different doctrines. Because people aren't going by this. They're going by what they think or, by, or what's been passed down from you know generation to generation. We want to follow Christ. We want to be a Christ follower. We do not consider ourselves any denomination. We are just followers of Christ. People of the book. I didn't mean for this to be a heavy shop talk. I was hoping that this would be a very encouraging talk to encourage you to, to just put aside everything. Turn off your phone. Turn off your TV. Turn off the preachers. Turn off the other books. And just pick up the word of the living God and read it for what it says. Here's something else. I think that a lot of people assume that this book is written to us, but in reality it's not. Especially like the New Testament. These were letters written to other people or churches in that time frame. This is not written to us.
This is written for us. It's for us to read it. So, oh, okay, well, so this is what we're supposed to do, or this is what happened. But this is not to us. And a lot of people assume that this is to us, and so they want to place themselves into it or place their situation into it. And that's, again, that's not what this is for. This is for guidance and teaching. I like what I heard one time. It said that uh, Bible means uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. That cannot be a more true statement. Because again, these are the basic instructions as to how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to treat others, how we're supposed to be, what, what we're supposed to accept in our life, what we're not. I hope that this video and this shop talk has been very encouraging. So thank you for joining me in this shop talk and look for more content that's going to be coming out. And so until next time, May the Lord bless you and keep you.